morning, church. Good to be in the house of the Lord with you all this morning. Good to see your smiling faces or some of those masked faces that with us as well. Uh, I just want to, before I even begin with some of the announcements, I guess the first announcement is is really with these. Uh, as you came in, and, and we and we put this out on social media and whatnot, we are continuing to have uh, masks be optional for us here at this church. Uh, but have you, as you've seen in the sanctuary, we've created a few little pockets and spaces where people feel like they can safely worship with distance. Uh, we are encouraging that uh, you know, the recommendations of the CDC do, do recommend whether you're vaccinated or not to uh, wear masks you know, when you're interacting with people in close proximity. So we do encourage that. And um, if, you, if that is you, don't want you to feel any sort of way. And if that's not you, I don't want you to feel any sort of way. We want you to be able to safely worship and feel like you are welcome here, no matter where you fall in that as well. It's just an awkward and kind of difficult time where we all just kind of shrug and go, I, I don't know, I don't know. And so uh, with grace, we are people with grace, of, of grace. And so I just urge us to be uh, those people, especially in this time. Amen. So uh, there are a couple other announcements. Uh, one, uh, that we have a new uh, option to give. It's really not new, but we're kind of putting it out there for us, and that is to give via text. You know, we don't go anywhere without our cell phones anymore, and uh, our cell phone can be our wallet, essentially, now. Uh, we've also encouraged that as you came in, you might have seen a couple new boxes that are, just, that are on the wall here uh, in the lobby, and another one that's, if you come in through this entrance, uh, there's one there as well. So if you're the old school giver, like as myself, and write the check and like to kind of put it in the plate sort of thing, we still have that option. But if you'd like to give online or if you'd like to give via text, you can do that. It's very simple. The prompts are on there, and it kind of just it, it gives you the directions on your phone as you do uh, these things there. Uh, next Sunday, One Blood Mobile is going to be here from 8.30 to noon. I know that many of you have come here expecting that you just kind of be able to go on the bus and be able to give blood. That usually is not the case. They're usually booked up. But you can do so through uh, the e-news. There's a link uh, offered through the website. You can get through that uh, to the e-news. E you can subscribe to that through the website. And um, you can sign up with them through that. And they're giving $20 gift cards now. So they, they obviously are in great need. So if that's any encouragement to you. And the third announcement is this, that we, since I have been here, it's been over two years, and we have not had a church membership class. Now, most of that reason is because of COVID, uh, but it's time. We have a good number of folks who have been here for a while, and some who have just now recently attended who said, I want to become a member, um, because we really believe that now is membership all that it, the most important thing? No, mo membership is not the most important thing. However, what we believe as members, uh, that we practice our faith through our, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, those things are very, very important. This is how we practice our faith, especially in the United Methodist Church. And so if this is you, this is a save the date for September 12th uh, from 12 o'clock, right at the end of services. Uh, until 2.30. We're going to provide child care, and we're going to provide a good lunch, like a really nice lunch. And so we hope that you'll attend. Now, if you're already a member, I'm sorry. I'm not feeding you. I love you, but uh, don't be sneaking in there. I know who you are. You're on my rolls already. Um, but you can help serve, maybe, in any case. And then you get, and then you get fed, and then you get fed. Uh, in any case, save the date. We will have an opportunity to sign up for that uh, digitally uh, next week. I think that's it for our announcements, if you bow your heads and hearts as we open up in prayer. Gracious God, we still ourselves before you. It is good to be in the quiet. The hustle and bustle of this week, hustle and bustle of this world, oftentimes can break us down, Lord. And so we find ourselves at your feet again. In the first day of this week, giving you the best of ourselves, the best of our worship, the best of everything that we have to offer because you have done that for us. And so, God, I pray that as we draw near to you, God, that you would, you would invite us to, you, you, you would invite your presence just to come into this place and to draw near to us as well. We know that's your heart's desire, and so we invite you into this space. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. 
if you would all stand as we open in worship this morning. If you remain standing as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed, the words will be above. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
It's at this time that I invite you to pass the peace, respecting kind of what I just said just previously of others around you. I encourage you to pass the peace.
invite you all to be seated. What a daunting thing to sing this morning. What a challenge it is as we sing these words to the Lord God Almighty. Do we mean these words in our hearts? These, the words that we just sang, I, where he leads, I will follow. Gosh, no truer words. That's what we are. We are followers of Jesus Christ. You may call yourself a Christian, but that's what it means. Listen to God and do what he says and follow in his footsteps. Now that, you all have some things going in front of you perhaps this week and you're going, I don't want to go there. If Jesus leads the way, go there. He leads you. Well, it's with that, and uh, we've already spoken about the uh, new offering boxes that we have at, at both doorways. Uh, we also have the text to give. Uh, the point is that leading wherever God calls us to, and that's in our service, uh, that's in our presence here, our presence with each other in small groups and Bible studies and all those things, and in our giving in all the different forms of it. And so as God is faithful to us, I give you thanks for being faithful to him.
Heavenly Father, we come, we come to you this morning, and we lift our voices with the voices of the choir, and we ask the same thing, Lord, that as we, as I look down at, as your holy word before me, recognizing that it is a light into our path, because your words have been given to us, you have guided us. Oh, that we would consume them, that we would make them part of who we are, the things that we say, the things that we do, that you would direct our path, Lord. That is what we are asking you to do to the, the strength and power of the Holy Spirit. Change us, renew us this morning, God. And even in this time that we bring to you our best offerings, our best tithes, whatever those things are, Lord, they, are, they come from you. And so we give back a portion of those blessings asking and inviting you to multiply them and teach us, your servants, uh, how to utilize them with wisdom and guidance uh, from you uh, to spread the good news of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We pray this in his name. Amen. I invite you all to be seated. I apologize in advance if you all hear me clearing my throat a half dozen times. Uh, I, I pray the devil away every single Sunday morning, and, so, and he, he just will clench up my throat like that and say, uh-uh, you are not going to speak this morning. So I apologize. Any throat clearing is casting out demons, is what, it, is what I'm going to call it. Uh, it, could, it could just be allergies, too, but I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but... So uh, I want to do something that is really unconventional. And you're like, okay, let's, you've done that before, Kevin. Uh, so don't fall asleep. Don't fall asleep. But I want to invite you to close your eyes. And you're going to have your eyes closed for a sustained amount of time. So like I said, don't fall asleep. We will hear you snoring, okay? So. <laughs> All right, so close your eyes. You are starting school. Maybe it's the first day of kindergarten. You got new sneakers, you got a new backpack, you brought the teacher an apple, you couldn't be more excited. In fact, you're so excited that you had to go back into the house to change your clothes. Uh, maybe, maybe you're starting school as a freshman in high school. There's a nervous excitement in the air. You're relieved to know that you have at least one friend in every class, but you're, you're not even sure where all your classes are. I mean, this school is huge, and so are those seniors. You think, man, I hope I don't get stuffed in a locker. Maybe you're a freshman in college. You're 18. What freedom you have. You got to choose what classes you take. Uh, but, man, you're, you're paying for these now. And, and so what, what, if, what if college isn't for you? What if you fail? What if maybe majoring in psychology and minoring in creative writing wasn't the best choice? It, maybe it's your first day at the job. Maybe it's your first day working period. You're, you're technically prepared for the job. You're trained. You have the education for the job. You, you don't know how you're going to, but you don't know how you're going to fit on the team that's already been working there for a while. Will you be accepted? And it's your first day on the job, and you already spilled coffee on yourself. Someone's going to totally judge you based on that. Maybe you're a new parent. Life just got real. You struggle to keep your, yourself fed and in good health. I mean, you, you keep forgetting how to water your chia pet. And now you're going to care for another human being, another soul? What are you going to do? You're moving to a completely new, unknown city. The job offer was so good you couldn't say no. But you're realizing now that you don't know a soul in this new city, a new home, a new job, a new climate. Does it ever not rain here? Oh, man, you, you have to find a new doctor, a new chiropractor, a new mechanic. You were married for 50 years, and now she's gone. Now he's gone. You're now a widow, a widower. He or she is all that you've ever known. You swear that you keep getting whiffs of her scent. The queen-sized bed now feels like a king. How are you going to move forward? You're recently divorced, married for a number of years, some happy, some not so much, but it's all you know. Now you're alone for the first time in a long time, and you don't know what to do with yourself. You were recently given a bad health diagnosis, and you were a healthy person all your life, and now your life is going down a different path. You were perfectly physically able, and now you have a disability. What now? 
you had a full quiver of kids, and your home has always been filled with laughter and children's voices, but now your kids have all flown the coop. You're now an empty nester, and man, it is deafeningly quiet. You've been working since 18 years old, 40 years at one company alone, and today you retired, a day that you've looked forward to for a long time. You're thrilled, but at the same time, there's another feeling that has overcome you as well. Church, I invite you to please open your eyes. What do all these circumstances uh, that we just went through have in common? They're all transitions. They're all difficult transitions in life. Uh, Raise your hand if you've experienced at least one of those things that I said. Right. Most of us in our life, exactly, how many more hands can we raise, right? We've, We've experienced that, or we will experience those things, right? Some good, some not so good, but all of them are stressful, all of them are daunting, and they are something that none of us, well, some of us do like it, but a lot of us don't like the six-letter word, change. We don't like change. Transitions and change is hard. And so how do we take on such transitions in life? I mean, we have certainly gone through some transitions as a society and as a world and as a country. And as I mean, just keep going over the last year and a half or so. So much change. That's what's been so difficult seems like every moment of our life there is some sort of change. So how do we deal with these transitions? And does our faith in Christ inform us and impact us how we move our way through these transitions? The reason why that we are talking about transitions today is because today is Promotion Sunday. Today is a day where we celebrate those kindergartners going into kindergarten, going into middle school, going into high school, those kids that are leaving one school body and going to another school body with excitement, but also with just anxiety and fear. You see some bags that are down here uh, that we're going to be actually welcoming some of those students in here at the end of the service so that we can celebrate them and promote them up, at least within our own realm here too as well. So um, if you remember these scary transitions, and I know that you do, you also know that when we think about these transitions, what do people of faith Say to us, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. We know it well. Year after year, it's a top ten quoted and uh, uh, shared verse. Um, Why? What is it about these words that should bring us peace? What is it about these words that should bring us encouragement, that should bring us hope, that when we in the middle of a hardship, we're, when we're in the middle or we're entering into a challenging time of transition in life, that we would uh, hear these words and understand them. Today, I want to look at Joshua 1.9, but also look at it in context, right? We'll look at it within the chapter of, the first chapter of Joshua, and see if it stands up to be one of these power verses that we know it to be. So if you have your Bibles with you, I'm going to read from the New International Version, uh, and that's what will be on the screen as well. I always encourage you to bring your Bibles with you, write notes in there, and, you know, remember where you were when you heard this and um, whatever God is doing in your life. So hear God's word to us. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I am about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon and from the great river, uh, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? 
Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. The word of God for the people of God. So these words come right at the tail end of Deuteronomy uh, chapter 34, uh, where we read of Moses dying at the ripe old age of 120. Uh, the man used by God to, to lead the Israelites out of Egyptian captivity and right up to the doorstep of the promised land that they had been searching for for 40 years. The Israelites are yet to possess the land, but they're right there. I mean, they can see it. They can see it with their own eyes, and they just need a new leader to take them there, and that new leader is Joshua. And, and Joshua was essentially second command, right? Moses' aid for 40 years, a warrior, a, a soldier, a faithful servant towards uh, towards. Moses and towards God. You know, in Exodus uh, chapter 17, the story that we remember is that Moses is there with his staff, and staff, and every time he lifts his staff, they are winning the battle. But every time he lowers it, they lose the battle. And so they help lift him up, and they set him underneath the rock. And but Joshua's on the ground; he's he's wielding the sword. So that's where Joshua is. When Moses ascended Mount Sinai to go get the tablets and to speak one-on-one with God, it really wasn't one-on-one with God. I mean, it was, but Joshua was the only other one that was right there with him. And when they came down off the mountain and they heard the golden calf party that was happening down at the bottom of the hill, who was it that heard it first? It was Joshua. And he says, I hear some shouting, right? And Moses says, yeah, but that's not good shouting. That's bad shouting, right? But it was, it was Joshua who heard this. So Joshua displayed great leadership and faithfulness throughout his whole life which is why in Deuteronomy chapter 31, we hear that Moses lays hands on him and that he says, I'm passing the torch to you. The Lord has commanded this and the Lord is anointing you to be the new leader. And he says for the first time in chapter 31 of Deuteronomy, be strong and courageous for the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It's the first time that he heard that of many times that he would hear that. And then of course, in the first chapter of Joshua, just as we just read, In the nine verses we just read, we heard those words three times in nine verses. Be strong and courageous. Such powerful words. Words that we hold on to and that we quote amongst ourselves. Be strong and courageous. And if Joshua is indeed going to take them from here into the promised land, he's going to have to be strong and courageous. I mean, they are, uh, they're stubborn. I mean, they've got to be, he's got to kind of, up himself in some way to be able to do this. If they're going to be successful in mission, he would have to be strong and courageous. But what is it specifically that would make him strong and courageous? Have you ever thought about this? I mean, just because God says, be strong and courageous, are you just, okay. I mean, is this like the father who's like, you better stop crying before I give you something to cry about? Yeah, okay, dad, instantly stopping crying. You know, like, is that how it works? You're just told to do something and then you just do it, right? Can you just turn on strength and courage on and off with a switch? Um, I mean, how can God command Joshua or anyone for that matter? Do you just decide to stop having fear? Do you just decide to be brave? God's words to Joshua are for sure encouragement, but they're also a command. And so how does God command that of Joshua or any of us for that matter? Now, I think what the early church father, St. Augustine, says is right on. He says, O oh Lord, command what you will and give what you command. See, here's some of our, here's some that we're celebrating about coming in. Anyway, did, did you all want to, did you all want to sit? You can if you want. I, don't, I just don't want you to, you know. You're not interrupting. This is all about you. All right? So this, is, this is a good thing. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I just thought, you know, hey, why not? So St. Augustine says, O Lord, command what you will and give what you command. I believe that when God calls us to something, he calls us through it. He enables us to be able to do this with three things. And this is what I'm taking out of this text. Three three ways that Joshua is enabled to be strong and courageous. The first one is this, to remember God's past. We remember God's past. Joshua 1, 3 through 5 says this, I will give you every place where you set your foot as I promised Moses, right? Remember when I made those promises to Moses? Now I'm going to make it to you. Your territory is going to extend from the desert to Lebanon, 
uh, and from the great river, the Euphrates, all the Hittite country of the Mediterranean, all of that's going to be yours. And as I was with Moses, I'm going to be with you. As I was with Moses, remember what God has said. This is the reminder to look back on the past. If God is saying, remember how I was faithful to you over the history of time, right? Remember the Exodus events. Remember how I took you out of slavery and did all these events. Remember how we were lost in the wilderness, right? And I provided water. I provided quail. I provided manna. Remember my past. I'm a faithful God who served you then. I will serve you once again and always. Remember God's past. The second one is to remember God's word. We just sang about it, right? We just sang about this. Joshua 1, 7 and 8 says, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey the law my servant Moses gave to you. Do not turn from it to the right or the left. You may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Say it. Say it. Meditate it. Pray on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Right? Say it. Pray on it. Do it. Right? Then you will be prosperous and successful. Do you hear the if-then statement in there? It's, not, it's, it's conditional. It actually is conditional. If you're careful to obey the law, if you're careful to follow my directions, then you're going to be successful. If you keep this book of the law on your lips and meditate it day and night, be careful that you actually do it, then you will be prosperous and successful. It's conditional. We don't like that as people of grace. We're like, no, God's love is not conditional. That's not what I said. I said being prosperous and successful is conditional in what God says. As United Methodists, one of our core doctrinal beliefs is we believe that God meets us preveniently. That it, it, we don't have to do anything before God meets us. We believe in prevenient grace. We believe that prior to any thought or any activity or anything that we could possibly do towards God, God is already acting towards us in love. God is always the actor. We are always the reactor, always, in every instance. And yet, this does not negate the truth that we have a role in our faith walk. God's going to do what he's going to do. But what are we going to do? Because there will be some results based on what we do. And the story is told of a man who walked into a flower shop, and he was admiring some roses that he saw on display. And he said to the florist, how wonderful are these roses that God has made? And the florist replied, God did not make those roses. I will show you the roses that God made. And so he brings them back to the uh, to, the, to the nursery or to the greenhouse, and he shows them a slide of a primrose. And he says, these are the flowers that God has made. The flowers that you saw in the front window, well, those are the product of what God and man can do together, which is a peace rose. I did not know this. I actually worked as a florist for about mm, six months or so, but apparently, almost all of the flowers that we buy from the florist and from Publix and whatnot are really genetically modified flowers. So they are a product of what God and man can do together. We have to remember that Joshua and the Israelites never actually reached their full, their full potential, their full goal. They went into the promised land, but it did not reach to where God had promised. Because the Israelites and Joshua didn't actually do exactly as they were told. They weren't as successful as they could have been. But this is the second reason why God can command them to be strong and courageous, because he's given them, he's given them and us a guide. He's given us instructions. He's given us a path. He's given us a way that if we would just read it and listen and say it and do it, we would be strengthened and we would be encouraged. Are you not encouraged as you read God's word that you aren't enlivened? Something within you. So that's the second one. The third one is this, to remember God's presence. And this is, the, this is the verse, really, that I'm glad the students are in here to hear, right? Joshua 1, 9, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Why? For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. This is the biggest reason why God could command Joshua to be strong and courageous, because he says God is going to be with you wherever you are. And remember, like I said, if God calls you to it, he's going to call you, call you through it. He's going to be with you wherever that is. He's going to provide whatever it is. If he commands something for you, he's also going to provide for it. You know, I think that receiving courage is very similar to receiving grace, or peace, rather. Can I command you all to have peace? Have peace. How does that work, right? I mean, can, can God do that to you? You're going to have peace, or else. 
I mean, it sounds ridiculous to even say that. But when we talk about the peace of Christ, it's really one of one and the same as saying the presence of Christ. To have the peace of Christ is, is the same thing as having the presence of Christ. They are really one and the same. In the same way to know courage is to know that God is with you. We gain courage and strength when we recognize and remember that God is with us. See what happens with Joshua, right? He says, be strong and courageous. I've commanded you to do this. But no, also the Lord, your God, is going with you wherever you go. In fact, what I want you to see this throughout Scripture, and I could have picked out dozens of scriptures, but I just picked out three instances where this is the case, that every time you hear God saying, be strong and courageous, you will also hear, because I'm going to be with you. So the well-known Psalm 23, verse 4 says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Isaiah 41, 10 says, do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and will help you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. In Zephaniah 3, 7, do not fear because the Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves you. He will take great delight in you and his love. He'll no longer rebuke you, but he will rejoice over you with singing. I could do a lot more if I had more time, but the, the call to have courage and strength is intimately connected with the recognition of God's presence with you. So remember God's past. Remember God's word. Remember God's presence. And maybe as we've been going through this passage of Joshua, you've thought to yourself, well, that's all well and good, right? But as we talked about going through the Psalms, I'm a New Testament kind of guy. I read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I, I, I understand those letters. Doesn't all that overwrite the Old Testament? Does that even, Old Testament, does that even apply to me? As we talked about last week, yes. <laughs> yes, it does. It does not overwrite that, right? We believe that all of this is God's word, right? And it is valuable in teaching. Um, but you might say the command to be strong and courageous and the promise that he'll be with us, that's not for us. We are not following in the line of, da of, of Moses. We are not ushering a great people into the promised land in the same way, right? This is not a covenantal promise that we're talking about here. This is us merely listening in on a conversation between God and Joshua. We're just listening in on a conversation, Kevin. I just can't apply it to my life. It doesn't work that way. And if you thought that, you'd be right. You'd be right. This specific command and this specific promise is for Joshua alone. As we go through difficult transitions in life, as we go through seasons of daunting change, uh, we'd like to apply these words to our current situations, right? It looks good on a bumper sticker. It looks good on different circumstances, right? We just plug it into the formula. So you're a businessman who has a big contract and you're com that you're competing for, and you're nervous about it. And so you, you, you take these words, and you're like, okay, I need to know that you're with me, God. And we just plug it. We have a formula, I think. Presence of God. All right, Lord, I'm asking you to be here. I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to be successful. There you go. We just plug it in. It's a math problem. All right, all set. All done, right? It worked for Joshua. It's going to work for me every time. All right? Or if you're a student and you are going into school and you have a test that's coming up, right? Or maybe you have some challenge. You have something that's coming up and you just say, God is with me. I'm going to be obedient to everything he tells me to do and then I'm going to get an A on a test. That's all I have to do. Good luck. That's right. I used to do the thing where you put the textbook underneath your pillow, right? Yeah. I, Hey, you try anything in desperation, right? Right now, I'm working with a couple who is about to be married and have their first child, and they're young. So should I just tell them, hey, look, I know you have some scary transitions in life that are coming up. Um, just be strong and courageous, for the Lord your God is with you, and just remember that God is with you. Be obedient to his word, and everything's going to be great. Should I just say that to them? Is that how this works? No, this is not some Joel Osteen prosperity gospel thing, right? Uh, uh, name it and claim it, right? That's, that's not what is happening here. That's not what is happening here. This is, this is not a discovery of some formula. How to trick God in three easy steps, right? That's not, that's not what this is. No, this is true. The promises of Joshua aren't directly ours. However, church, fast forward to Jesus, and we are able to say that the Christ Jesus, the greater Joshua, 
does make these promises to us. And if you didn't know, Jesus and Joshua are really one and the same name, right? Jesus in Hebrew is Yeshua, and Yeshua translated in English is Joshua. They are one and the same name. So to say that Jesus is the greater Joshua is true. And Jesus tells us to be strengthened, to be encouraged, for he will never leave us nor forsake us. And you know this verse, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Jesus says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Oh, it keeps going. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Right? Jesus' last words on earth. Do you think that they matter? I mean, we, we, these are our marching orders, church. We understand that if we're going to do anything as the church, it's going to be to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Nothing else matters compared to that. But if we trust that to be everything that is about who we are, why would we not also trust those last words? The very last words that he says here on earth. And he says that he will be with us to the end of the age. Jesus leads us into the greater Joshua, leads us into the promised land of heaven, the promised land of eternal life, and he promises that in this life he will always be with us to the very end of the age. Now, of course, these words come to the disciples as Jesus is literally ascending to heaven, so he's literally leaving them as he's saying that he's never going to leave them, so it's a little bit ironic here, but what Jesus is talking about here is what he's He's saying the presence of the advocate, the counselor, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity is going to be with them. And he says this in John 14, 15 through 17. It says, he says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. Later on, the same passage, Jesus says to his disciples in John 14, 27, he says, peace. I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You see those. God is with us. In reality, I don't believe that Jesus is really telling us not to have the emotion of fear. Right? He's simply encouraging us to remember that he's right there with us in the midst of the fear, in the midst of the valley, whatever it is that he is with us. Author and theologian C.S. Lewis famously says, God cannot give us happiness and peace apart from himself because it is not there. There is no such thing. There's nothing about the strength and courage drawn from God outside of his presence. He can't give it to you. It's all about his presence being with us. Even through the final transition in life, from life to death, this is the case. Church, we're going to go through the the many changes in life, the, the difficult transitions in life. We talked about those who are going into kindergarten, talked about those who are going into middle school, those who are going into high school. We have one that's going into college. And uh, what is it that's going to give us peace? What is it that's going to give us hope and strength and courage? The founder of the Methodist Church, John Wesley, on March 2nd, 1791, surrounded by friends, Wesley completed the race of his life, and he made the final transition from life to life eternal. And grasping the hands of those who loved him, Wesley declared his final words, best of all, God is with us. It applies to all of us throughout all the transitions of our life and even to life eternal. Amen? Let us pray. Father, we give you thanks for the opportunity to remind ourselves, Lord, of something that you tell us repeatedly throughout Scripture, is that you are with us through every single transition in life, that you are with us in every opportunity that we would call upon the name of Jesus, that you are with us. God, we give you thanks for that promise. We give you thanks for the assurance that we know that you don't call us not, not to have fear, but to recognize um, that you walk with us and that you guide us, and that you hold our hand, and that you love us, no matter what happens. God, we give you thanks for that. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's at this time that this whole morning is really about a celebration of our students that are uh, going into, again, kindergarten, those who are going into middle school, those who are going to high school, and I see a few who are here, and... Um, so I'm going to ask um, Miss Tanya and Miss Becky, and I don't know if Mr. Matt's in here or not, 
No, no, Mr. Matt. All right, so Miss Becky and Miss Tanya, if you would come forward. Guess you didn't remember to give them like, hey, look at that, Mitchell's. Johnny on the spot there. Awesome, thank you. Good morning, everybody. We are thrilled to um, actually be here doing Promotion Sunday this year. Last year, we sort of did this in a virtual way. Um, but this year, we get to be in person, and we're very excited to just celebrate some of our kids. Obviously, Pastor Kevin's been talking a lot this morning about transitions, and he used one of our favorite verses, which is, be strong and courageous. Courageous is actually my very favorite word ever. We use it a lot in Sunday school. And we always talk about how God is with us all the time through all of our transitions. And we're going to recognize and celebrate those children who are moving into kindergarten, into sixth grade and into high school because those are some big transitions in life. But I also want to take a moment and just say this year's another unusual school year that we are headed into. And so really everybody is enjoying a wonderful transition. And we want to be sure and pray for all of our families, our teachers, our school staff, and our children this week. So without any more um, crazy comments from me, I'm going to read um, the children who are being promoted to different levels. We actually do not have any of those children with us this morning for this service. They're all at home and with their families or doing other activities, and some of them will be with us for the next service. But they all receive a Bible for their age group that they will be moving into and a certificate, and so we'll be sure to get those to these children. So our kids moving into kindergarten, which are the ones that ah, get us just the, the most, Elijah Bottoms, Kendall Smith, Chloe Bidgood, and Chase Bidgood. Those moving into sixth grade this year, Emma Devine and Victoria Goodwin. And we have one moving into high school this year, Bianca Sequera. So we have some, we, we have obviously many more children than that that are with us and that are transitioning into just a brand new school year. So that we ask that this week maybe you say a few extra prayers for these kids who are facing brand new situations and for our entire school year to be successful and for everybody to get through it very healthy. Um, Pastor Kevin, will you say a prayer? Let us bow our heads and pray together. Gracious God, we give you thanks uh, for teachers, for students, for administrators, uh, for the students that we have lifted up that are about to go through this struggle and this difficult transition. Um, it is difficult to be the, uh, the, the small fish in the big pond and to feel that way. I pray, God, that you would bless them in such a way that they would be strengthened, that they would be given encouragement. Um, and that they would feel it in a tangible way through the power of your presence. And that, you're, that they would know that through the power of the Holy Spirit that you go with them. That you, as much as sometimes we say that the schools are trying to make sure that God is not present, we know, Lord, that you are sovereign and that you are able to uh, break through those barriers. God, that you are with them. Um, anytime that there is fear in a child's eyes if they would call upon you and call upon the name Jesus and trust that. And God, that we as your church would come alongside those students, would come alongside those teachers, uh, those who are going through these difficult transitions and those who are just going through the, the regular crazy transition, Lord, of going back into school from summer into uh, this fall, uh, summer, fall season. God, that you would um, allow us to say the right words, that you would allow us to not be frustrated in the, in the bus lines and as just traffic picks up, uh, that we would, you would put it on our heart to pray um, and that we would offer these up in kind, encouraging words to these kids. Uh, we know this uh, is your desire, and so it is ours as well. We give you thanks, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. All right, so we will be maybe giving some Bibles and some gifts away to those students that are attending next week or next service or next week, wherever we see them. We know that they've got a lot going on in the next couple of days. And so uh, I echo what Miss Tanya says and that continue to pray for them. And I, I know, raise your hand if you're a teacher in here. Okay, there's a number of teachers in here and I know that there's a, a lot more in the next service too. Uh, it's been really, really tough for the teachers uh, and for these students as well. And so we certainly, our thoughts and prayers 
go with you, and so does God. And uh, it's with that, if you all would stand as we close out in worship here this morning. you heard the words, you sang the words, would we be reminded to trust in the Lord's grace and trust that he goes with us in this place. Would you receive this blessing? As those who know the love of Christ and know his presence fully in this place, would we go from this place trusting that the Lord goes with us? Amen. Go in his peace and have a blessed, blessed week.